Chapter 28, The Hour of the Wolf. This is Steel Rangers level murder here. Rage, burning, explosive rage. In the moment I realized that the Steel Rangers had invaded my home, were killing the ponies inside, I saw red like I had never seen before. My nerves were hot, electric. I wanted to strike out, to slaughter the fuckers, to rip them apart from the inside out, and keep stomping until they were nothing but paste under my hooves. But my enemies, the murderers who were defiling my home, were not here. It would be hours, even at Calamity's best speed, before we could make it to Stable 2. I wanted to hurt some pony now. My whole body and mind and scream, soul screamed for justice and retribution. And if I couldn't have that, I at least some pony to buck. But the only ponies around were my friends. So I stood there, enraged, in silence. And they were wise enough to not interfere. Do you think I wanted this? Stilhoof snapped, prancing through the interior of the Sky Bandit. Stable 2 was home to Applejack's family. If anyone in the Apple family still lives, they live in there. I ain't saying you wanted this, Calamity shot back. And I ain't saying you didn't do your damn best to stop it. I'm just saying your best wasn't good enough. The rush-colored Pegasus was pouring on the speed, despite being at the point of exhaustion. And now, it's my turn. Zenith watched the argument, for once not being the focus of the shouting. She turned to Velvet Remedy, eyes large. This is your home? You and the little one. Why did the Steel Rangers attack it? Velvet Remedy shook her head. Each blink sent fresh tears down her charcoal cheeks. The wind whipped at her colored streaked white mane. Resources. Nothing more. All they see is a functional stable. In the very least, the water talisman is priceless. The apple orchard, nearly so. She closed her eyes, shuddering with a soft sob. At most, they want it as a base. My rage was beginning to ebb. The fire and fury unable to maintain itself without a direction to strike. I could feel numbness, sorrow, and horror lurking behind it, ready to overwhelm me once the inferno of anger burned itself out. You can't just prance in and start killing rangers, Stilhu stomped. I don't see why not. As far as I can see, they're nothing more than a gang of high-tech raider prey, preying on the innocent. Calamity kicked at his battle saddle, changing the ammo. Pointed like that need to die, and I'm to kill him. It's my policy. Steel was turned to Velvet Remedy. You talk to him. And say what? Velvet's voice was hard as steel. Steelers grunted. As a suicide mission, for a start. He looked at us. Do you really think you can take on a few squads worth of knights and paladins in magical armor? The ghoul's words hit me home. The size of this was too much. We knew how many steel rangers were down there, each with weapons and armor and combat experience far in excess of our own. How was I going to save Stable 2? How could I fight that? I began to remember each pony that I had grown up with. My teachers, my peers, each pony at my first and only slumber party. I felt myself being crushed under the weight of this responsibility. I couldn't breathe. Y'all gonna be surprised just what we can do. The armor encased ghoul rounded on the Pegasus. I'm on your side here. Are you? I asked, finally breaking my silence. All others turned a collective gaze on Steelhooves. 
the Steel Ranger, an eternally obedient soldier Buck, had been backed into a corner, forced to choose between his loyalty to us and his oath to them. If that was all it was, then I knew we would lose. But I had seen into his head, into his memories. Still whose oath wasn't to the Ministry of Wartime Technology. It was to her, Applejack. And when it came to defending her, there had never been a mortal he considered sacred enough to let it stand in his way. If that still held true, then we still had the chance. Steelers didn't answer. That was not a good sign. But such a decision was hard enough without being further forced. I didn't dare to push him. I needed him. I needed all of them. Well, that's just perfect, Calamity grossed. Can you at least promise not to shoot us in the back when you make up your mind? I wanted to tell the Pegasus to shut up. I knew Calamity had a right to say that. And right now, he was the one going beyond the pale just to get us there. But if I had any chance of not letting Stable 2 down, not letting every pony I had known die, I needed my friends to pull together. We needed to be strong. Instead, I was drowning. And all about me, they were splintering apart under the tension. Velvet Remedy nickered. Well, if we're making promises, maybe little Pip can promise that, if we win, she won't adopt any of them. I stumbled, feeling sucker punched, even as I was fighting to breathe. Oh, come on, little Pip, Velvet said, rolling her eyes. It has not passed my notice that you have a habit of collecting ponies, and now zebras, who have nearly killed you. She shook her mane. I'll admit, I sometimes wonder if there isn't a part of you that is doing it to get back at me. What? What the hell? Well, aside from just being the one who patches you up every time you hurt yourself, I'm also the one who is at least a little responsible for you getting trapped out here to begin with, Velvet pointed out. Her normally beautiful voice sounded frayed. I could tell this was returned to the nasty, bitchy Remedy who dealt with the horrors around her by thinking poorly of her friends. I'd really hoped we'd left this Remedy behind. But there she was, buried under the surface, just waiting for enough stress on the fault lines of Velvet's personality to set her free. Are you sure there isn't a part of you that isn't trying to punish me by surrounding us with reminders of all the times you've nearly died out here? Whoa, Nelly! Calamity looked back. Is that how you think of me? Oh, goddesses. Please. I don't know if I can do this even with you. I can't do this without you. Stop it! All of you! I screamed, with all who was shaking. We can't tear apart now. Our home. My home. They need us. What good are we to them? if we are already bleeding to death when we get there. Bits and shrews, Calamity explained. You're right, little Pip. I'm sorry. As am I, Velvet Remedy said. The good Velvet was, at least for now, back again. I don't know what came over me. I guess I'm not dealing with this very well. So, Steelers inquired, his voice calm, if the arguments had never happened. Do you have a plan? I felt the wind blow through my coat and mane, ruffling my utility barding under saddlebags and armor plating. I looked at each of them, suddenly feeling very small. My eyes fell to velvet. This can't be just my decision. Velvet, this was your home too. My eyes pleaded with her, silently. I begged her to help me. Please, Velvet. Please don't let this be all on me. This is home. These are our ponies. I can't have whether they live or die be all on me. I, I just can't. 
Love returned my gaze. In her teary eyes, I saw a kindness that told me she understood, and that she would take as much of the burden from me as she could. Velvet turned to the others. Stulus is right. I doubt we have the firepower to take on the Steel Rangers, and even if we do, we couldn't hope to win without losses. So, we look for an avenue of diplomacy first. I nodded, weeping thankfully. Suddenly, I could breathe again. There was an odd orange glow on the horizon, like an angry dawn was approaching. But the glow was from the wrong direction, and we were many hours before the first hints of daylight. The sun and the moon had gone wild, raising and setting by their own whims. But even those whims seemed to have a clockwork precision. What are we looking at? Fires, Calamity answered. That up there is the Everfree Forest. Looks like Red Eyes got the whole backside ablaze. Zenith queried, Do you think Red Eyes troops might be near stable too? Nah, not a chance, Calamity answered. Those fires are over a day away. Wouldn't make no sense for them to be anywhere near Ponyville. I leaned against Velvet Remedy, using her soft body for her physical support, drinking in the scent of her to calm myself. I was still trembling, trying to steady myself, fighting off waves of alternating rage and bleak sorrow. The stress was winding me up until I felt I would explode, or shatter. Velvet Remedy was allowing herself the distraction of staring at the firelit cloud over in the distance. I remember when I first left Stable 2. The cloud cover had breaks in it. I could see real sunlight. It was the most beautiful, warming thing. More beautiful than anything I'd experienced in my life. I thought, if there is something as wonderful as this out there, on the outside, that it can't be bad. She chuckled sadly. Haven't seen the sun like that again. Sometimes I wonder if that is why this world feels so dark and hopeless. I remembered the similar break in the clouds, pouring the soft light of Luna's moon down upon Monetary Jack and me, as we faced off on the Ponyville Bridge. It seemed like a lifetime ago. Yep, Calamity replied, missing the art and soul of Velvet's comment. The Everfree Forest don't work properly. Pegasi have always had a tough time keeping the cloud cover over that place. It's like the clouds want to move, all on their own. Cloud curtain in the area right up ahead against it can't get mighty patchworky sometimes. Steelers was staring in the other direction, his visor gazing out into the darkness. Finally, he admitted with a low rumble, I don't understand why Elder Blueberry Saber is doing this. I felt Velvet Remedy had covered that question fairly well earlier. Steelhooves let out a breath again. This is far outside her territory. Elder Blueberry Saber is the elder for the Philadelphia conjugant of Steel Rangers. Stable 2 technically falls under the preview of my elder in the Manhattan contingent. Oh. They can keep Philadelphia. I offered, feeling a fresh surge of fury as my thoughts touched on what should be happening every minute now. Red Eye keeps going stronger. The Steel Ranger position there is stagnant, if not weakening. I think Velvet's right about them needing a new base. The ghoul nodded inside his armor. Still, it should fall to Elder Cottage Cheese to take Stable 2. For him not to be there would be a considerable divergence from protocol, and to have two elders in the same place would be strategically unwise. In front, Calamity whined, 
letting all his legs hang in the air and sticked out his tongue with an expression of disgust. Seriously now? Your commanding officer's name is Cottage Cheese. Did his folks hate him or something? Sulu chuckled despite our dark situation. He does prefer to simply be called Cottage. I like Cottage Cheese, I said in a very small voice. Hey, maybe your Cottage Cheese elder is pulling the same thing on Blueberry Saber that she pulled on Little Pip, Clamity suggested. Send her into a situation that feels like a giant death trap. After all, I don't believe a bunch of rubbish about the Ministry of Awesome having Black Ops stables and all sense like that. Well, maybe not complete nonsense. I muttered under my breath. What you mean by that, Lil Pip? Crap. Calamity heard me. Well, I mean that I saw Rainbow Dash and Pinkie Pie setting up Zakora to be a double agent for Equestria. Rainbow Dash said Zakora trained under the Ministry of Awesome's best trainers, which made it sound like the Ministry of Awesome did that sort of thing a lot. I was met by stunned silence from everyone, except Pyrelight, who cooed curiously at Velvet. I had been slightly worried that mentioning uh, that mentioning that I had the memory orb of Rainbow Dash might lead to Calamity demanding a recollector. I didn't want my Dash-eyed friend losing himself in the orb the way Velvet often did with the Fluttershy orb. Zakora? Zenith asked, her exotic voice low and cautious. Do you mean Zakora of Zakora's hut in Everfree Forest? Whoops. Um, yes. Turns out she was a friend to the Ministry of Ministry Mares, and chose to... It was really a good idea to tell Zenith that Zakora had gone undercover to betray the zebras? Zakora was a traitor, Steelers growled dangerously. She was selling weapons technology to the zebra. He took a step towards me. She tried to give him the damn gun that would punch through Steel Ranger armor. Oh boy. Uh, no, not really. That was part of her cover? No, that's not true, Steelhoves insisted adamantly. Fluttershy knew a zebra? Velvet Remedy's voice asked. At least, that revelation, thank the goddesses, probably didn't lead down dangerous paths. Uh, Lil Pip, maybe you ought to be explaining some of these memory orbs you've been looking at. I groaned. Even staying away from personal memories like Steelhoves' memory orbs, or dangerous ones like anything involving Fluttershy and the damn mega spells. This would take a while, but part of me was thankful for the distraction. We still had a few hours to go. Burning hoof means what? That's what I. Uh, that's what she said. I was still a little overwhelmed by that as when I lived it. I'm still wrapping my mind around Fluttershy hitting on Applejack, Vella chuckled with amusement. Even if it was for a good cause. Her eyes twinkled as she looked at me. I hung my head. I had some torment coming from the way after the barn door slip up, and I suddenly felt sure Velvet Remedy was drawing a whole new level of inspiration from the Yellow Pegasus. As if to confirm my suspicions, Zenith leaned close and intoned, You're doomed. Steelhoofs had remained abnormally silent, even for the Tecturn Ghoul, ever since I explained about the first memory. At first, I thought that the revelation about Sakura had affected him, or perhaps the confirmation of his theory about the Ministry of Awesome. With time, I grew to suspect that neither was the case. Rather, I suspected that while we were distracting ourselves from the conflict that awaited us in Sable 2, Steelhoofs was plunged deep into his own turmoil and was working through it as best he could before the moment of choice arrived. In a way, he was stronger than we were, or at least, than I was. 
The sound of rapid fire pops floated in the air. We're approaching Ponyville. Sweet Apple Acres was still a good bit away, but in the stillness of the wasteland, the night air carried the sound of battle at great distances. Velvet Remedy whimpered. That's a lot of gunfire. Grenade machine grenade machine guns, Seelos noted, like mine. Several of them. I felt myself trembling as my imagination insisted on conjuring images of what might be happening. They wouldn't be using that sort of weaponry inside the stable, would they? And if not, what were they doing? Suddenly, I pictured the ponies of Stable 2 marched out into the nearest field of poisonous apple trees, lined up, and fired upon with grenades, just for the cruel pleasure of seeing their bodies torn violently apart. I let out a low moan, tears in my eyes. I tried to banish the image. Surely even those monsters couldn't be so vicious, so cruel. These were Steelhoof's brethren, not raiders, right? Monsters! Velvet Remedy hissed next to me. I think you're right, Clemity agreed, making me cringe. Please, no. This can't be what I'm thinking. It just can't. Red Eye's fires are driving a whole mess of things towards Ponyville. Sounds to me like a few have wandered their way up to Sweet Apple Acres. It was the deepest part of the night. There was a name for it that I couldn't remember. The mystical black hour, where all is the darkest, and you can't sleep. When the weight of all your sorrows and bad decisions come weighing on you most heavily, and when the monsters scratch just outside your door. Velvet Remedy got up and started rummaging through the supplies we had stored in the back of the Sky Bandit. All those things we were keeping for trade or had intended to stash back at Junction R7, but didn't want to burden our saddlebags with. Including every weapon Calamity had been able to strip from the pony Stern had brought with her to attack my friends at the Philadelphia Tower. I began to reload my weapons. My choices were limited. Little Macintosh was powerful enough to possibly punch through a Steel Ranger's armor if I could hit a weak spot. I had a single clip of armor-piercing bullets for my sniper rifle. One of my zebra rifle had sufficient armor-piercing rounds. Thanks both to the convoy Calamity and I looted outside of Philadelphia, and some additional ammo he had liberated from stern slavers. I floated the zebra rifle in front of me, looking at it. My range? A rage was beginning to boil again, pushing away from the rumbling pain. For once tonight, I put up a wall against it, trying to remain at least partially rational, not let this overwhelm me. Did I really want to use the zebra rifle against the steel rangers? On one hoof, they were my enemies, and they deserved what they were going to get, and the rifle was the best weapon I had for putting a mess of them down. But the zebra rifle's enchantment, the bullets would do more than just punch through the armor. I'd seen what happens to a pony who was set on fire inside the suit, and the memory still horrified me. Was I really ready to go spike on these ponies? What is that you're wearing? Zenith gasped. Velvetrimberg responded gracefully. We are going into battle against truly dangerous opponents. How foolish it would be if I did not go in wearing armor. And this was the best armor I possess. Velvet Remedy was wearing the Zebra Legionnaire armor. Of course, unless you wish to wear it, she said kindly. I think you have much more claim to it than I do. Zenith considered that for a moment, glancing towards Steel Hooves. No, Equestria is my home. Oh, horse apples, Comedy muttered to himself, wincing. Then speaking up, uh, Velvet, Lil Pip, I've got a request, and feel free to say no. I know he's asking a lot, and I have no right to ask. He paused for a moment, then pushed forwards. But if we're gearing up for a big fight, then I got some stuff statched not far from here that might help. 
Only about 15 minutes to our flight. I promise. Well, that's 15 minutes them rangers could be killing your kin. I was already feeling each drop away with blood. 15 minutes more when we'd already taken so long. I couldn't bear the thought. No, I said firmly. We can't give them a minute more, much less 15. I took a deep breath. But if you think it will help us, then drop us off at the stable door and go. You can meet us back. No, Velvet interrupted. Splitting up is a bad idea. I don't want Calamity wandering the stable alone, trying to find us. We all go in together. She was right. My suggestion was a bad one. Calamity, go ahead. We've taken hours to get here. If 15 minutes more is going to make that much of a difference, we've lost already. I know you wouldn't even bring this up if you didn't really think it would help. And anything that helps us get through this alive is worth 15 minutes. Calamity extended his wings, changing course. Sweet Apple Acres was now looming into view, the rolling hills of feeble trees bearing poisoned fruit. The old barn still standing, surprisingly intact. You won't be able to use this barn until next spring. I suddenly imagined the apple bloom had torn the original barn down while they excavated for Stable 2, then rebuilt it afterwards. When Stable Tech builds something, they build it to last. I could see sparks, sparking lights in the air, like part of the night sky had descended through the clouds and landed in the middle of a farm. A swarm of evil stars. The pinpoint lights of muzzle flashes danced across the ground all around it. Zenith drew a sharp breath. No! What is it? The zebra's eyes were wide with horror. Star spawn! Where the Steel Rangers fought was the horror out of Zebra Legends. A creature from beyond the moon, unleashed upon the world aeons ago as a gift from the stars. The creature was massive and completely invisible save for the surging living constellations of light that seemed to float around the inside of it. I brought my eyes forward sparkle, but while the compass burst with the lights of the ponies on the ground, most of which were hostile red, my pipa couldn't lock onto the entity they were fighting at all. As far as it was concerned, nothing was there. Gunfire from the embattled Steel Rangers poured into the thin air. There was a starry air attack, looking back, crushing them or sending them flying. Rockets exploded, bathing parts of the creature in fire long enough to glimpse its shape. I felt only mildly reassured that its structure seemed at least vaguely pony-like, with a head body, and four legs. An eltrich roar blasted across the clouded, shrouded heavens. It sounded like the cosmos screaming in rage. My first instinct was to try to help. I wanted to run to their aid. It actually took a moment for me to remember that the ponies down there were my enemies. But not all of them, at least according to my EFS. And wasn't that enough? We've got to help them, Steelers insisted, voicing my own thoughts. You want a diplomacy. This will be the first step. You cannot hope to fight the star spawn, Zenith gasped. What matter of fool are you? All you can do is run and hide. Have you met us? Steelers asked. With those words, I knew he had made his choice. Detour abandoned. Calamity winged towards the barn and flew us into the storm. Boom! 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 Sulu stood on top of the Sky Bandit, his grenade machine gun tearing apart virtually everything the Invisible Monster had as Calamity encircled us around again. The Pegasus Buck was doing his best to get us as close as possible while keeping 
uh, outside the star spawn striking range. Not an easy trick, being unable to see the creature properly. The steel rangers on the ground had been nearly decimated. There were at least a dozen corpses in crushed and mangled armor. Nowhere near the forces that Steel Who's estimated had been sent to take the stable. I could make out three remaining from the dim light of their EFS, visors, and brilliant flashes of their weapons. One fired a pair of missiles. They exploded against the transparent hide of the monster. The, spars the star spawn retaliated, an unseen appendage connecting with the armored knight in a sickening crunch. The pony flew through the air towards us. Yow! Clamator cried, dodging. I could see the pony was dead as it arced past us. Internal organs pulverized inside gruesomely dented armor. Pyrolite shot past us, strafing the creature with balefire, washing parts of its back with flames that quickly died away. I focused, trying to wrap the entire entity in a magical field. I had no intention of moving it, but as the magical aura spread around it, the creature became clearly outlined. It was far bigger than I thought, but at least now we could properly damage and dodge the alien behemoth. Velvet Remedy cast her anesthetic spell at the Cosmic Beast. Her magic hit square in its head. The creature stumbled, phased for only a few seconds, then let out another unearthly cry. Dang it! She's too big! We ain't doing more than bee stings to her! I told you, Zenith warned, cringing. You can't slay a star spawn. You best be thankful this one is but a baby. A full grown one would have devoured all of Ponyville without even noticing. This is just a baby? I asked in shock as the monster stepped forward, colliding through the barn. The last building standing on Sweet Awful Acres. The barn, which had weathered apocalypse and 200 years of the wasteland, came crashing down. I felt a pang as I watched the barn I'd witnessed Applejack and her friends together in during sunnier, happier times be obliterated by the uncaring misstep of the star spawn. Little Pip, keep that glowing up, Shilus ordered as my telekinetic field began to slip. Calamity, bring us around in front of her and hover. Velvet, have that spell ready again when I say. I sure hope you know what you're doing, Calamity said as he brought the sky bandit directly in front of the monster's snout. Now, Velvet. Velvet already focused unleashing a small bolt of magic that splashed against the head of the creature. Again, for just a moment, it was stunned by the same magic that would completely paralyze a hellhound for nearly an hour. A streak of smoke shot out of the top of the Sky Bandit, above me, as Steelhoos fired off a single rocket. I watched as the missile shot through the glowing air and my magic, beyond where the height of the creature should be, lodging inside the monster's transparent star Motted head. The star spawned let out a howl that tore us from the sky. Calamity fought to regain control before we smashed into the poisoned orchard below. A moment later, the missile detonated, its explosion accompanied by a gut wrenching, wet, splotchy sound. We hit the ground seconds before the star spawn's body did. I bounced around inside, banging heavily against the benches and metal walls. Bursts of pain blossoming through my body. The Sky Bandit rolled, crashing through several trees before coming to a stop. Calamity hung limp from the harness, while the Remedy lay amongst the scattered supplies, moaning. I could not see where Steelers had been through, thrown to, or Zenith. My pit buck was clicking madly. I felt the warm stickiness matting my mane. I reached up a hoof. My lightest touch brought dizzying pain and shooting lights, and then, darkness. The bright spotlight of Steelhoof's helmet found me. Zenith trod behind him, uh, looking annoyingly unhurt. She had, as I would learn, jumped out of a window as we had crashed, landing in a controlled roll that left her unmangled, save for her mane. Is Every pony okay? I asked weakly. Never better, Stilhu said, 
The way my pipbook was clicking, he might be telling the truth. You fell through a tree, Zenith countered. Your back should be broken. Hard to keep down a canterlot ghoul, Shulavs replied. I got the feeling he enjoyed the way she gasped in near horror, stepping away quickly from him. That's us, I smiled weakly, full of surprises. I looked at Steel Hooves. How did you kill the Star Spawn? That was amazing. I'd seen Ursa, Ursa before the war. Uh, back in the war. Steel Hooves replied. From your outline, it looked like the monster had turned into... weren't that physically different. Just a nastier bit and a lot harder to see. So, I fired where an Ursa's eye socket ought to have been, and hoped for the best. Calamity had come to with a weary groan, finding himself hanging upside down in the sky band as harness. He laid his forelegs, as if hoping to flip the entire wagon back over. It wasn't going to work. Here, let me help, I called out, and magically unhooked the harness. Calamity fell onto his back with a thump. Oof! The Velvet Remedy hobbled out of the passenger wagon, dragging our medical supplies with her. I realized that we had probably scattered our belongings across a hundred yards of irradiated cropland. That would be a task for the morning. First, we had to get through the night. At least I hadn't lost my weapons. Every pony and zebra gather around, Velvet said politely, dropping your saddlebags to the ground. Your medical pony is going to patch you all up before we proceed further. While simultaneously managing to not take it as a bad omen that she's having to heal your wounds before you even get inside the stable door. Hold up right there, ponies, a voice ordered from the darkness. Two helmeted spotlights pinned the group of us. The two steel rangers who had survived the star spawn battle were moving towards us, weapons pointed. The light from their EFS visors letting me know they had the targeting spells locked onto us. Oh, wow, came a sweet mare's voice from the second suit. Looks like it's Elder Steel Hooves. Star Paladin Steel Hooves, the other corrected swiftly. And keep your weapon locked on him. Knight's Strawberry Lemonade. That, that one turned to face our ghoul companion. We have specified orders to send you on your way. You will not interfere with this operation. That was awesome, Sir Steel Hooves. Sir, the young knight gushed, turning off her EFS. How'd you kill that thing? Knight Lemonade, the older Steel Ranger turned with a growl. You will bring your EFS back up and lock it onto your targets. Do you even realize which stable you're attacking? Steel Hooves asked evenly. This is Stable 2, the stable built to preserve the Apple family and the ponies of Ponyville. This is the Apple family's farm. That barn has been the barn of the mayor of the Ministry of Wartime Technology. Applejack herself had grown up in it. That stable holds her kin. You are attacking the family of the Ministry Mayor of Wartime Technology. It is you who should leave in utter shame. We have our orders, as do you. You are not my commanding officer, Paladin, nor is Elder Blueberry Saber. Steelhoof stood his ground. And even if you were, these orders are wrong. This operation is a disgrace. And any pony involved in it does not deserve the title of Steel Ranger. The orders I'm giving you come from Elder Cottage Cheese himself. You are to leave at once, and take your tribal friends with you. The paladin turned to the knight, once. And you, bring up your EFS and lock on target. That is an order. Sir? Knight Strawberry Lemonade faltered. Eld Star Paladin Steelhooves is right. This operation is wrong. The paladin turned to face the knight. A black mounted light machine gun swiveled to lock on her now. You will bring up your sparkle, 
and lock on target, or you will be facing a court-martial for disloyalty before the sun next sets, the paladin growled. Do I make my... Blam! The paladin fell, twin bullet holes forming black zeros in his armored helmet. Strawberry Lemonade backed up in shock. The rest of us turned to Calamity. What? I gave Diplomacy a chance. He obviously wasn't about trying to join the good guys. Of Remedy's horn glowed softly as she did her best to heal the gash on my back of my head without blinding my whole face with bandages. Fortunately, she said it looked and felt far worse than it actually was. Elder Cottage Cheese is dying, Night Strawberry Lemonade said, filling Steel Hooves in as best he could. I mean, I know he's been dying forever, but just in this month, not even the medical bed seems to help him anymore. He's focused on taking Stable 29 before he dies. That's where he is, with Star Paladin Crossroads. He invited Elder Blueberry Saber to lead the acquisition of Stable 2, along with Star Paladin Nova Range. Of course he did, Sulu's commented. Star Paladin Crossroads had pushed for me to become an Elder. She has the same sentiments that I do. Cottage must have known there was no way Cross would agree to taking Stable 2. He stomped. Star Paladin Nova Range, on the other hoof, is the MWT traditionalist like Elder Blueberry Saber. Clemity wiggled his left wing. It had suffered injury in the crash, and now Velvet had it muffled in bandages. Reckon this Cottage feller wants the Crusader in Stable 29? Live forever inside a machine? Well, that's insane, I asserted. The Crusader can take an implant, an imprint, a copy of a pony's mind, but it's not like the pony actually becomes a part of the machine. Cottage Cheese would still just be dead when he dies. Unless, Velvet Remedy suggested, he thought he could really put himself into it, mind and soul. It took me a moment to realize what she was thinking. A soul jar. Blackwing's Talon group had been hunting for information on the Black Book for some pony. Now, I suspect that I knew who. If a soul jar could be made out of anything, why not a crusader? I suddenly imagined the Elder, who ordered the attack on my home, living forever in an indestructible computer. There was no way I could let that happen. He didn't get eternal life as a reward for his murder. Steelers continued to speak with Night Strawberry Lemonade. In the end, she told him, Look, I believe you're right, and I'm willing to stand aside. But I can't follow you in. I can't attack other rangers. Her visor turned towards Calamity. Or cooperate with tribals who do. Steelers nodded, putting an armored hoof on her shoulder. I respect your decision. You're doing the right thing. He turned to us. Are we ready? I stood, floating the zebra rifle in my right hand, or in my right, as Little Macintosh to my left. From what the knight had told us, Elder Blueberry Saber had left a fifth of their force guarding the way in, a precaution against us as much as the horrors slowly erupting into Ponyville from the Everfree Forest. The truth is, I was not ready. But every moment we spent talking and healing was one, was one more of the four dozen steel rangers inside to tear away, to tear their way into the security in Overmare's wing and slaughter every pony they had killed in their initial strike. They couldn't wait for me to be ready. We go. Calamity brought up the rear. His sharpshooting would be critical should we be flanked. I kept glancing back at him, watching his reactions as we passed through the tunnel beyond the apple cellar. It was not like the sanitized little tour 
he had been taking in Stable Tech headquarters. This is Velaromedy's home, he muttered. Lil Pip's home. I'm pretty sure he didn't know I could hear him. Before the Pinkie Pie statuette, I probably wouldn't have been able to. I gotta be strong for him, not go crazy. I can't just charge in and kill every armored bitch I see. I need to be strong. I need to watch for him. I need to protect him. I can do this. The skeletons which littered the floor had been crushed and broken, trampled by an army of metal hooves. I felt a twisted sickness welling up from the reservoir of rage that was filling my head. No pony knew who they were, but they deserved better than this. I felt part of my anger turns in on myself. Why had I not returned to bury them? They died at the door to my stable. But then, the equestrian wasteland was filled with skeletons. I hadn't treated any of the others any better. Not even the skeletons of Apple Bloom or Pinkie Pie. But at least, I hadn't defiled them. I hadn't smashed them under hoof without even caring. The door to stable two was wide open. Velvet Remedy and Steel Hooves were our diplomats, so they were in the lead. I wanted our Steel Ranger to have a shot at wooing the other Rangers before we had to shoot. So Velvet was the first to step back into place that had once been our home. She stopped with a painful gasp. I galloped up to meet her. The entrance room was as gray as the maintenance areas of Stable 2 had always been, but now there was a lot more color splashed over it. The colors of pastel-coated ponies lay in pools and sprays of darkening crimson. The Overmare had sent half a dozen ponies to greet whomever was coming in. Only two of them, security guards, were armed. The others had come bearing only hopes of friendship, scattering near the open muzzle of a magenta-coated young mare was a bouquet of flowers, a welcoming gift. The white flower petals were stained red, and the steel rangers had gunned them down. The pony in my head stood, teetering on the edge of a great, dark spiral. A bath covered with bones that led forever downward into blackness. The currents of my rage pulled her towards it, a tidal force of crimson pouring into the abyss. I pulled her back, and my rage shattered. The horror and sorrow and hurt that had been building just flooded in. I collapsed to my knees, sobbing openly. That's it, I heard Calamity say. He sounded so very far away. Fuck diplomacy. Any pony who does this or who was part of it, who even stood by and watched, is a dead pony. I realized I recognized the yellow-coated mare who lay disemboweled in the corner, but I couldn't remember when I had met her, or what her name was. And that made it so much worse. I couldn't remember her name. She deserved to have her name remembered. She deserved to be alive. Velvet Remedy, her own face swept with tears, trotted up and wrapped her forelegs around me, pulling me into an embrace as I heaved and sputtered and wept wretchedly against her armor and coat. Little Pip has been strong long enough, I heard her say. This is my home too. I'll take it from here. Calamity, Zenith, and I formed our stealth team. As soon as I could quiet myself and move again, Velvet Remedy had sent the three of us ahead. We were no longer looking to negotiate unless they offered the white flag first. Instead, we would strike first, fast, and with fatality. The first steel ranger whom I pumped full of bullets with the zebra rifle died in agony, screaming as his internal organs burst into flame, cooking him from the inside out. I didn't feel any remorse, no sympathy, nor did I feel glee 
or even a grim satisfaction. My emotional dulge had left me fire, fiercely numb and focused. The act was necessary and right, and beyond that, I had no more emotional impact than brushing my teeth. I no longer felt even a twing of revulsion for what Spike had done defending his own home. We passed more dead ponies in the hallway. The Steel Rangers' attack had been brutal, but there were not nearly the number of dead that I had expected. The Friendship Committee had been a well-calculated play on the Overmars' part, and when the Steel Rangers showed their true intentions right there at the entrance, that gave her enough forewarning for a rushed evacuation into the security in Overmare's wing. I both loved and hated her for that. So far, the maintenance wing had been the worst. The Steel Rangers had moved to secure it first, probably to prevent any ponies from sabotaging the technology they were most interested in. The ponies down there had no time to get out before the Rangers had cut them off. I turned the familiar corner and found myself face to face with the pit buck technician stall. A fresh surge of emotion hit me as I saw the black scorch marks on the wall I had once cleaned. A red trail of blood ran along one wall, dripping at the end until it met the corpse of my mentor. If I ignored the missing leg, I could almost pretend that he was asleep on the job again. This was not the mural I had once hoped for. I was crying once more, my vision blurred, making the lights on my EFS swim. The door to my mentor's office lay open. There was movement inside, a red splotch on my compass. I waved the others back and started to creep forward. The Steel Ranger never saw me coming. I floated little Macintosh up, right behind her head, just to the left of the fins. Blam! 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 I unloaded the cylinder into her brain. She was probably dead after the first, but I didn't care. I turned to walk out and froze as I spotted my mentor's hammock. There was an empty Sparkle Cola bottle in the maintenance book. TLC squared. Tender loving care for totally lost causes laying on the floor beneath it. I remembered how my mentor would skim that book while talking in a direction vaguely connected to where I was sitting in rapt attention. Shredding tears of painful nostalgia, I floated the book into one of my saddlebags. I heard the distinct sound of Calamity's battle saddle. A moment later, Zenith and Calamity dove into the pit buck technician's stall. The hallway outside erupted in flame. Little Macintosh ain't stealthy, little Pip. Zenith pulled a jar out of one saddlebag she'd been using to carry her herbs and mixtures. She tossed it into the floor, where it shattered, spreading a licorice-scented goop. The zebra clopped her forehooves in the goop, and then her hind hooves. The rush of flames on the hallway stopped. A moment later, her grenade bounced into the walls and into the room. I grabbed it with telekinetic shroud, and floated it back out the way it came. I heard a shout of alarm just before the explosion. Damn it! I hate unicorns! The Steel Ranger said, letting us know he had survived, largely unscathed. I turned to Calamity, and... Where was Zenith? I looked around, then up. She was crawling along the ceiling, the goop on her hooves providing a magical abrasion similar to the spell that the slavers on the train used against us weeks ago. She crept up to the doorway of the stall and peered out, looking both ways before slipping back and mouthing, Two. With small nods of her head, she indicated where, giving Calamity the same information my EFS was giving me. I reloaded little Macintosh. Then she snuck out, keeping flat to the ceiling, silent as a ghost. Calamity waited until the moment she dropped onto one of the Steel Rangers, then rolled out, facing the other, and fired a single double shot. I charged out, swinging little Macintosh around as I kicked on my targeting spell. But Zenith had already crippled the other pony, her hoof strikes resonating through the armor 
and pulverized internal organs. I let my jaw drop a little as she finished him off. Fallen Caesar style scared the crap out of me. As we put further into maintenance, we started seeing glowing piles of green residue, or pink ash. All that remained of ponies killed with magical energy weapons, scattered amongst the massacre of ponies of Stable 2. Calamity found that disturbing. My EFS told me there were four steel rangers around the next corner, near the door to the generator room. I related this to the others. I'll take them, Calamity said, starting to move forward, but I put a hoof on his shoulder and shook my head. Calamity frowned. He didn't want to back off, but he did so anyway. The Pegasus and the Zebra held position, as I galloped silently back to where Velvet Remedy and Steelhoofs were waiting. A moment later, Steelhoofs trotted past Zenith and Calamity, and rounded the corner. His missile rack was open, his weapons primed. I am Steelhoofs, Star Paladin. I am declaring an end to this travesty of an operation. We do not assault the stable of the Mayor of Wartime technology. And we do not slaughter innocents when she was dedicated to protecting ponies. His voice rumbled with command. You have two options. Side with me and stand by your oath to the principles of our ministry's mayor. Or side with Elder Blueberry Saber and Star Paladin Nova Rage and be gunned down. Then you admit you're a traitor, one of them called back. You stand down and submit to arrest. Wrong answer. Steelers fired everything he had into the hallway, which was torn apart in the blaze of light, heat, and shrapnel. I don't think I'm going to be able to wear this armor any longer, he said, stepping back around to where we were waiting, his armor smoking and peppered with red hot shrapnel, which is a problem, since I can't take it off. Honestly, Calamity said with a grin, you ain't never looked finer. Zena slipped through the back door of the Stable 2 saloon. I followed close behind, getting a surprisingly pleasant eyesight of the Zebra Mare's hindquarters. I found myself cursing the slavers who had scarred it so. The back of the saloon was a darkened kitchen. Well, darkened by until Pyrelight flew in and landed on one of the pots, sitting on the stove. The Balefire Phoenix had almost returned to normal, but was still shredding off enough energy to glow like a torch. Mr. and Mrs. Sparkle Cider were dumped in a far corner, their bodies bleeding into each other. Mr. Sparkle Cider had always given me free ice cream when I was younger. Well, until he caught me lockpicking his wine, his wine cabinet. His wife had been one of my mother's friends. Miss Sparkle Cider's hind hoof was caught on the door of the walk-in freezer, propping it open. All the ice cream inside was slowly melting, swirling in pools with the sh sherbet on the floor. I felt an uncontrollable rage sweep over the numbness. My heart was pounding in my breast. It's clear, Zenith whispered, looking out into the saloon itself. I passed the message back. A minute later, I crouched in position at the door, loading the last of my bullets for little Macintosh. The magical bullets. Calamity and Zenith remained in the kitchen, taking their turn as rear guard. Steelhoof stood in the saloon, looking out of place amongst the rich pseudo-wood decor. Velvet Remedy, however, moved with purpose, almost gliding up to the raised stage. The magic of her horn playing against the terminal and soundboards. Velvet Remedy had a plan. A moment later, she trod to the edge of the stage, looking down at steel hooves. My mind flashed back to sneaking into the saloon, in an underage blank flank, hiding in the back of the crowd, and watching as nearly adult Velvet Remedy performed. Her music moved my soul, and often it was agony not to dance. Ready, she said. Her horn flared up. 
Attention, Steel Rangers. Steelhoose began. His voice boomed through all of Stable 2. Velvet Remedy had commandeered the public access system. This is Steel Hooves, founding member and eldest living of the Steel Rangers, star paladin of the Manhattan Contingent. I call on you to stop and consider your oath. Consider where you are and what you are doing. Your loyalties lie with Applejack, the mayor of the Ministry of Wartime Technology, the creator of the Steel Ranger armor, and the mayor who by her own hooves, the sweat of her brow, and the honesty of her heart, forged the Steel Rangers? Or is your oath to the fearful, greedy ponies who abandoned all that she stood for, turning us into little more than technology raiders, hoarding toys from the past because they have forgotten that it is virtue, not trinkets, that make a pony great? Ponies who now turn their eyes on Applejack's own home, commanding that you slaughter her family for their greed. These orders, this operation, would be an abomination in the eyes of our ministry's mayor. Applejack was put in charge of the Ministry of Wartime Technology because she was the bearer of one of the elements of harmony, and the ruler of Equestria recognized the caliber of that. You think it was the virtue in her soul or the jewelry on her neck that made Applejack a bearer? Today, you must choose with whom your oath lies. Surrender this ignoramus goal and join by my side, reaffirming your oath to the protection of the citizens of Equestria, just as Applejack dedicated her life to. Of course, in this disgraceful act, in the face of wrath of those who chose to stand true. The glow around Velvet Remedy's horn faded. Steel Hooves looked up at her. Well, how was that? She smiled brightly in response. Three Steel Rangers charged into the saloon, battle saddles filling the room with flames and machine gun fire. Steel Hooves fell in the first volley. I stared at the Steel Ranger, collapsed in a spreading sprawl of the ichor that ghouls called blood. I slid into sats and fired the last of little Macintosh's rounds into them, felling one and crippling the second. I dropped Applejack's gun and swung about the zebra rifle as three more poured in. Behind me, I could hear the explosive blast of Spitfire's thunder as Calamity decapitated the first ranger to try and get through the buck. Back. One of the five remaining Steel Rangers fired a pair of missiles up at Velvet Remedy. Unicorn Singer threw up her shield as the rockets detonated against the underside of the stage, spraying the air with jagged chunks of pseudo-wood. Another turned towards me, leveling what looked like an anti-material rifle at my head. No! bellowed Velvet Remedy. Her horn glowed, and her voice magnified. This is my stage! The room blazed, with light conjured from Velvet Remedy's horn, as she made herself the center of attention. The steel rangers in front of me sidestepped, as Velvet's light show blinded her. The distraction gave me enough time to fire a burst from the zebra rifle, one bullet tearing through the visor of my opponent. One of the steel rangers responded to Velvet with a roar from her twin miniguns. Velvet's shield held. I fired three more armor-piercing shots from the zebra rifle into the minigun gunner's head seeing the flash of fire through the bullet holes. I could smell the ponies brain roasting. Velvet whipped out her combat shotgun, firing it at the invaders. But their armor proved more than sufficient. It did not, however, protect them from her aesthetic spell. The steel ranger I'd crippled went down. Another steel ranger fired up at her with a back-mounted sniper rifle. The bullet tore through her shield and armor, and I saw the look of shock and hurt in her eyes. Pyrelight swooped in for the kill, blasting and downing anger at the two still standing from radioactive flame. Their suits protected them well against the fire, but the flames obscured their vision. I slid in and out of sats, spraying each steel ranger until I was out of piercing ammo. 
Spitfire's thunder sounded again. A moment later, Calamity and Zenith galloped into the room, knocking me over. I realized I could smell gas. Somewhere deep in the stable, I heard a deep explosion that didn't sound firearm or grenade. Alarm shot up my spine as I wondered if the Steel Rangers had managed to blow up security doors that the bulk of my home's population was hiding behind. Zenith turned, grabbed me in her mouth, and pulled me from the doorway. Roosh! The kitchen erupted, an inferno pouring into the saloon and setting fire to the pseudo-wood tables and chairs. Not one word about my name, Calamity panted, looking at Zenith. Then he saw Steelhooves and froze. A moment later, where's Velvet? I pointed upwards at the stage. I could see her fallen form. In the eerie silence that followed the battle, I could make out the sound of drops of blood falling from the stage to the floor below. Blop, blop, blop. No, he whispered. His wings propelled him up to the stage faster than their zenith or I could have made it by hoof. The orange man Pegasus landed and pulled Velvet Remedy into an embrace with a gasp. Ow, whispered Velvet. Shush now, you silly pony, Comedy said, holding her. You done got yourself shot, but you're gonna be right as rain soon enough. We got ourselves the best milk pony in all of the equestrian wasteland. I started up the stage, stairs towards them. Zenith was right behind me. Ow! Velvet said again, then added, Who's a silly pony? Ya yeah, is, Velvet Remedy, Clamity insisted gently. Ya beautiful, wonderful mane. Now shush it. I reached the stage just in time. I didn't know what Velvet had started to say, but this time, Clamity cut her off with a kiss. Ah, Zenith said in my ear. I've been wanting to see those two do that ever since I met them. I was stunned at first, but then I realized that the little pony in my head wasn't feeling the slightest bit envious or jealous. She wasn't happy exactly, but that had more to do with the situation we were in, and the fact that Velvet Remedy was bleeding all over Calamity from a bullet wound. The air filled with an odd, unholy sound from down below. A chill filled the air. Steelhooves stood back up. My jaw hit the floor. I had sorely underestimated what it meant to be a canterlock ghoul. I didn't have time to marvel. Oh fuck! I moaned as two steel rangers took a position outside aiming grenade miniguns at the front windows of the saloon. Every pony, we've got to go now! <laughs>